Hey, it's Carlin. I'm with Mac DeMarco. Hi. Uh, so with Salad Days, what was it like writing and recording that album? I did it uh, in the month of November, and it was sandwiched in between a lot of touring, so we kind of took a month off to do it. And I, uh, I don't know, just kind of sat down and, and wrote a bunch of songs. I had a lot on my mind that I didn't realize until I sat down. So it was interesting, and I learned a lot about myself, so it was okay. And you generally write and record by yourself. Why is that? I think that it, I mean, for me, the recording process is kind of like, the recording part is uh, part of the songwriting, like kind of helps that, and I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, I, sometimes I'll record with other people, but I, I can play all the instruments, sort of, so it's, it's more satisfying when I do it myself. I get a kick out of making some of the sounds all right, and I think if I went in a nice studio, the guy would get so fed up with me, so, so it works out. And why did you call it Salad Days? Salad Days is a term from a Shakespearean play called Antony and Cleopatra, and it's a uh, it's a term that kind of, it's kind of like saying like, ah, oh, the good old days, you know, like this like virginal, like innocent time in your life or something, right? So that's what it means in the play, right? Um, like the youthful green days. But uh, for me, it's more like uh, I took that term and it's like, because um, I'm pretty young still. I'm only 24 now. And sometimes when you're touring a lot, you're going crazy, uh, you, you kind of get a little jaded sometimes. You become an asshole. So for me, the term is just to snap myself out of that. It's kind of be like, hey, man, you're still living it. You, you should be, feel feel good about your life. So, And now I do. It worked. And uh, I keep reading that Mac DeMarco has a really wild live show. Why is that? I don't know. I think a big part of it, I mean, we get, you know, we have a good time up there. I think that it's not an art gallery. I think that it's supposed to be enjoyable for us and for the crowd. So if they if we can give the kids good energy then hopefully they give it back but yeah the kids i think because i mean a lot of people heard that now i think so kids come even if we're like oh i'm so tired it's gonna be you know slow one tonight doesn't matter because the kids are so excited that it's like you know they they're the ones that are making it crazy and then we feed off that so you know it can go either way i guess but well i think we're just lucky to have a uh, really excited 16 year olds at all our shows i guess speaking of the kids do you have a memorable fan interaction like a fan moment? Yeah, I have a few, yeah. I've been getting a couple of kids that, like, cry now, which is, like, n not so good, I guess. It's all I guess, because, you know, it's like, I don't know how to deal with that. But if you kids that were crying and I met you see this, I uh, hope you're feeling better. Um, there was another guy that ripped a whole bunch of his own hair out, and uh, they had to come and sedate him and take him in an ambulance. That was really weird. Um, but I don't know. I mean, if I think, you know, positive ones, I don't know. We meet people every day, so it's kind of hard to say, but it doesn't really stick in your mind like someone ripping their own hair out. But, I mean, it's a pleasure to meet every person that comes out of the shows. I really, I'm really, i really happy they come. And I guess with a reputation like this, what's your favorite rumor that you've heard about yourself? I guess that I have an album coming out with Tyler, the Creator, called White Chocolate on Capitol Records on uh, August 16th. Is it true? Is it false? I don't know. Maybe I made it up myself. You just have to wait and see. If you are Canadian, you live in Brooklyn now, but... What's the most Canadian thing about you? Like, is um, there one Canadian cliche you allow yourself? I love the 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 uh, the, the style from Alberta. Like, yes, you can. I think a lot of people in the states think I'm maybe oh he looks maybe like he drives trucks or maybe he's a plumber. I don't know, but uh, I enjoy it. There's something about um, the labor force in uh, Canada, the way they dress. And if I said this, I've worked on a lot of these crews. If I said anything about like, man, your overalls are sick, I get my ass kicked. But Gotta love them. Those guys look great out there, you know. All right. <laughs> so speaking of, I guess, the labor force in Alberta, tell me about a weird job that you've had then. Uh, I did road paving. I did uh, insulation in the new University of Alberta hospital building. Um, a lot of, like, landscaping work. I don't know. For a while there, it was kind of like you, in Alberta you could get a job for a weekend, make, like, 3000 bucks for, like, a couple of days, and then quit. And then when you're out of money, you just go find another job and do the same thing, so... A lot of crappy work like that there, yeah, but I don't know. Interesting. Builds character, right? And uh, you've toured with a lot of bands. What's the weirdest thing you've seen on another band's rider? Um, I'm pretty sure Japan Droids uh, request a high-powered fan blowing and blowing Brian's hair around the whole time. Really? Like Beyonce They might style? bring their own fan, though. It might be their fan. I always thought that was really funny. Love you guys if you see this, but uh, it was kind of funny, you got to admit, you know? <laughs> Okay, well thanks for talking with us, Mac. My pleasure.